Hey guys, Theory here, and welcome back to another episode of the Lord of the Rings Theory. I hope you're as excited as I am to be here. If you're new to the channel, I wish you a warm welcome, and if you seem to enjoy my work, be sure to subscribe, and in turn, you will receive your weekly dose of content. After the Ents, led by Treebeard, attack Isengard, Saruman is trapped within his tower, Orthanc. Whether you're familiar with the books or the films, Greymer Wormtongue has a pivotal role in assuring the Seeing Stone switches possession from one white wizard to another. In the films, we see the Palantir slip from Saruman's garb after the literal backstabbing from Wormtongue. In the books, Grima tosses the stone in anger towards Gandalf's company, narrowly missing the wizard's head. The stone smote the stair on which he stood. The rail rang and snapped, the stair cracked and splintered, and the ball remained unharmed. In both the adaption and books, Pedagon Took collects the stone. Seeing Pippin bearing a great weight, Gandalf hastily collects the dark globe from the Hobbit. It is not a thing, I guess, that Saruman would have chosen to cast away, Gandalf states. The company depart Isengard and begin to travel back to Edoras in Rohan. They rest a night on their voyage. Merry and Pippin lie together as they prepare to sleep. This is when the inquisitive nature of hobbits materializes through Pippin. That glass ball, now. He seems mighty pleased with it. He knows or guesses something about it. But does he tell us what? No, not a word. Yet, I picked it up and I saved it from rolling into a pool. Here, I'll take that, my lad. That's all. I wonder what it is. It felt so very heavy. Pippin's voice fell low, as if he was talking to himself. After discussing the topic, Merry warned him to not meddle in the affairs of wizards. Pippin replied, But our whole life for months has been one long meddling in the affairs of wizards. I should like a bit of information, as well as danger. I should like a look at that ball. It was clear that the halfling's brief encounter of a few seconds with the Palantir was enough to absorb a glimpse of the power that had run through it previously, with the ball being used by Saruman to interact with the Dark Lord, Sauron. Gandalf was aware that the stone was dangerous. However, he did not consider that such a brief encounter would enchant Pippin into glimpsing into the stone again. Merry went on to sleep. However, Pippin was lying still. The dark globe seemed to grow stronger as all grew quiet. Pippin felt again its weight in his hands and saw again the mysterious red depths into which he had looked for a moment. He tossed and turned, and tried to think of something else, at last. He could stand it no longer. He got up, and looked round. Pippin walked softly, to where Gandalf lay. He looked down at him. The wizard seemed asleep, but with lids not fully closed. There was a glitter of eyes under his long lashes. The halfling motioned, and the wizard did not react. Half against his will, the hobbit crept towards Mithrandir. Hardly breathing, Pippin crept nearer. Step by step, he put his hands out stealthily and slowly lifted the stone, replacing it with a rock. The crystal ball did not seem quite so heavy as he expected or remembered. Quickly, he drew off the cloth and at last looked upon the thing that he had uncovered. There it was. A smooth globe of crystal, now dark and dead, lying bare before his knees. At first, the globe was dark, black as jet. Then, there came a faint glow and stir in the heart of it. Now, he could not look away. And we arrive here. <laughs> So what did Pippin 
sat in the Palantir. The seeing stones were the link between the two towers. Saruman's Palantir was placed within Orthanc. The appearance of the stone explained a lot to the company in understanding how Isengard and Mordor were so proficient in coordinating with each other. And when the ball was activated by Pippin, Sauron believed that it was being summoned by Saruman in Orthanc. Gandalf was roused and he hurried to Pippin, who was now lying motionless after encountering the red depths of the Palantir. Gandalf took his hand and bent over his face, listening for his breath. Then he laid his hands on his brow. The hobbit shuddered. With his eyes closed, he cried out, It is not for you, Saruman. I will send for it at once. Do you understand? Say just that. Pippin had just echoed the words of Sauron. The Dark Lord knew a hobbit possessed the ring from his torture and interrogation of Gollum. He immediately assumed that Saruman had held the halfling with the ring captive. And now, we then arrive here. Look at me. Look at me. What did you see? Pippin was struggling to remember his encounter with the Palantir, however, Gandalf was urging the hobbit to talk. Speak! In a low, hesitating voice, Pippin began again, and slowly, his words grew clearer and stronger. I... I saw the dark sky and tall battlements and tiny stars. It seemed very far away and long ago, yet hard and cleared. Then the stars went in and out. They were cut off by things with wings, very big. In the glass, they looked like bats wheeling round the tower. I thought there were nine of them. One began to fly straight towards me, getting bigger and bigger. It was clear. He had witnessed the Nazgul circling around the city of Minas Tirith. Pippin continued. I tried to get away because I thought it would fly out, but when it had covered all the globe, it disappeared. Then he came. He did not speak so that I could hear words. He just looked and I understood. Since Sauron had assumed he was communicating with who he supposed was Saruman, Pippin had just foreseen the Dark Lord's plan to attack Minas Tirith. After the vision, Sauron spoke through the globe to who he believed was Saruman. So you have come back. Why have you neglected to report for so long? Pippin did not answer. Sauron asked, Who are you? Pippin remained silent. Then Sauron pressed and hurt the halfling horribly. So Pippin answered, A hobbit? Sauron began to laugh at Pippin. To the halfling it was cruel and felt like being stabbed by knives. Pippin was writhing. The Dark Lord finally said, Wait a moment, we shall meet again soon. Tell Saruman that this dainty is not for him. I will send for it at once. Do you understand? Say just that. Referring to the ring as a dainty, Sauron believed that Pippin the Hobbit possessed his ring in Orthanc and he would send forces to retrieve it, commanding Pippin as if he was a puppet. The halfling spoke aloud the words Sauron wished Saruman to hear, including the remark, Say just that. After these words, the interaction was concluded. At least that's all Pippin could remember. In the adaptions, they switched the vision from the Nazgul sieging Minas Tirith to the burning of the White Tree to better express the future turmoil of their city, as the White Tree of Gondor represented hope. Although in the film, they do pay homage to Pippin's original vision, as the Hobbit views the starless sky from Minas Tirith, he understands that it was akin to his vision in the Palantir. There's no more stars. Is it time? Fortune had struck the enemies of Sauron, for he had revealed his plan to Pippin, mistaking him for Saruman, 
and Pippin was resilient, not revealing any detrimental information if Sauron had not rushed to the conclusion that Saruman had betrayed him and interrogated Pippin further. He would have learnt all that the Hobbit knew of Frodo and the Ring to the ruin of the freak peoples of Middle-earth. Gandalf was extremely revealed, there was no lie in Pippin's eyes, narrowly escaping the consequences of Sauron becoming knowledgeable of their secret plan to destroy the Ring. Indeed, fortune had favoured them that Sauron did not want information, he only desired Pippin. Don't you understand? The enemy thinks you have the Ring. He's going to be looking for you, Pip. They have to get you out of here. Gandalf hence entrusted the Orthanc Stone to Aragorn for safekeeping, for this seeing stone was the ranger's to claim by right. It was the Palantir of Orthanc, from the treasury of Aragorn's forefather, Elendil, and set in Isengard by the kings of Gondor, who erected the tower which Saruman took dominion over. I hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to leave a like and if you guys seem to enjoy this episode, I'll be sure to cover Aragorn's encounter with Sauron, which is another Palantir based scene. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and join me on my journey to 2000 subs. I'm seeing a lot of positive comments in support of this channel and I really do appreciate every single one of them. If you have any video suggestion ideas, drop them down below. I do get around to covering most of them as you guys come up with really fascinating theories and lore videos to cover. With all that being said, I hope you're having a great day, and as always, my Middle Earth friends, hard on lay for watching, and I'll see you on the next episode of Lord of the Rings Theory. Embrace the power of the ring, or embrace your own destruction. Renew shall be